Welcome to another video. I wanted to talk about the text editor today. Whenever you begin to build anything in Canvas, anytime you're going to be interacting with different pages or assignments, you are going to be dealing with this text rich editor. And I just wanted to take a really quick moment and go into that editor and just tell you kind of what it is, right? Take each of the pieces, talk about them. Some of them are really obvious, but I wanted to kind of make sure that we hit that, hit the, uh, hit all the parts. So bear with me if some of this is really kind of redundant. But uh, the first thing we're going to do uh, at the top uh, here, you're going to title your page. You're going to have the font size for the things that you're going to show up in your uh, in your window. You get to choose here the headings versus paragraph formats. Uh, you can go ahead if you wanted to edit some of these things. You can obviously type it out and then select the format you want it to be in, and it kind of changes it up to you kind of how you want to do that. You want to break it up, you can hit enter to give it new paragraphs and then you can you can highlight that. Or you can select it first, type it in, and then change it that way. Obviously you have your bold, italicized, underlines. This is your your text color. You can of course choose some pre-formatted text. Um, you can take the color out. You can go in here and type in your hex code if you want a very specific color like the Buford colors. Okay, once you type in a few of these codes, uh, the ones down here, I, it might be just this one. It will keep the last code you typed in. So if you needed to select that often, you can. Okay, the next one is the, I believe this is the highlighter color. Um, you're going to type in this, and I believe it's going to be, it's going to give yourself a select here. It highlights the text kind of like if you wanted to emphasize something in a paragraph. Um, if you have uh, a need of superscripts or subscripts, superscripts, this one, subscripts, the one below, uh, then you can select it there. Of course, this is your alignment. It's left, center, or right. Um, if you wanted to add bullets or uh, some type of, if you wanted to add bullets, or outlines, this is uh, where you would add those different things. You have a, pr a few to choose from. Uh, this one is where we start building in other elements. Uh, this is, uh, obviously that's a chain link image, if you didn't know what that was. This is where I can choose from bringing outside information or linking to somewhere else in, in my Canvas domain. And so, uh, it, let's suppose that I wanted to type in a a link I can type in I can choose an image I can choose a I can choose any object and I can link it it can become what we would consider a, a button or a link a hyperlink I can go up here and I can select external links and if I had let's suppose that I had a let's suppose that I had something like a, a website I can copy that website and then I can open that up and I can simply paste in the website here and when I get done then now if you click the link, then it's going to take you to that website. Well, maybe you don't want the website, or maybe you did it wrong. Um, obviously, you can edit those things over here once you've typed it up. If you want to remove the link, highlight it, select it, and then it's going to say edit the link, kind of what we just did, or you can remove the link entirely. If I want to be able to link to other places in my in my module, or if I have a, a um, page that I wanted to emphasize or, or to, to link to, I can click here and I can get down to course links. What this is going to do, if I have pages, it's going to bring up those pages that I have created. If I have assignments, I don't have any assignments yet, but if they would show up here, if I wanted to just link directly to an assignment that I had created, of course, any of these things, right? The bottom one's a little bit different. These are the locations. You can see this off to the side over here. A lot of those things are, are I want to be able to create a link directly to one of those locations, like grades or discussions or my syllabus, right? And so you can select those things, and now you can have that link here. I didn't highlight that earlier. But now I can select that, and I can create these links to go anywhere in my, in my document. And so uh, that's super useful. I, I use this all the time when I'm building in different things. I want to click on something. I want to go somewhere else, right? Um, the next one. If we want to embed images or upload images, if I click on upload image, it's going to take me to uh, to the upload browser where I can select an image from my computer. So I can come in here and I can select an image and I can bring that image in and, and then I can submit the image 
And what that's going to do is it's going to put this image right in wherever I've selected, wherever my cursor was, it's going to place that image in. Okay. If I've already uploaded images, right, what it's going to do here is going to go in. Now, obviously, I had already uploaded this one uh, pr prior to this, but I've uploaded it twice. And so you can see here that anything that I've already uploaded at one point in time, it's going to be located in my course files. Okay, and I can see when I've added them, I can sort them in certain ways. Um, I can choose some uh, different media or documents that I've pulled from. I'm looking for an image here, so it shows images. And I could select any one of those, and I could add those to the to my uh, to my course or my page, whatever I'm I'm dealing with. Okay. The other thing was user images. This is kind of the similar. Um, this is under me. So anything that I've uploaded ever under my my documents. Um, to any course, uh, then that's going to be available in, in my user files. Okay. When I click the other one where it says course images, that's the only things I've uploaded in this particular course. Okay. The next one, let's go down and get on a new line. Here, this is your media. Of course, course media and user media, those are exactly the same as before. If I want to upload a media, I can upload it from my hard drive. I can record uh, a message live, kind of like what's happening right now, or I can embed that. Okay, now there's a whole video on embedding videos from YouTube or, or locations like that, right? There's an embed code. Um, when you click share, look for the embed uh, link, click that, and it's gonna have, bring up this huge code. I'm not gonna take the time to do it now, but then you would embed and you'd place this code in right here, and it would show you that video right off the bat. Did I get everything here? Oh, let me go back here. So back in images, there was a few other things I wanted to talk about. Um, Let's say I don't really have an image that I know of, but I, I want to put something there with Unsplash. It allows me to come in here and type in a topic. And these are images that uh, people have uploaded and you can use these for free. You don't have to worry about any kind of problems with them or, or copyright or anything like that. If you have a specific URL, a, a website, a place that this image is located, then you can type that in. I don't use that as much. Um, Unsplash or even, uh, uh, what is that website? Pexel, P-E-X-E-L is another great website uh, to get images from. But you can kind of go through that as you see fit right here. And this is great, right? So that, that completes the images. The same thing for the, the, the upload media. Of course, this is really video, what you're looking at here. And you can do those in those three different ways. Okay. In this one, if we click here, if I want to upload a document, if I've got a PDF, if I've got a Word document, if I've got anything like that that I want to, to upload that, I can click Upload Document. So I've chosen a PDF document to upload. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring that up and it's going to place that as a, as a file that our document that a student can download. Now, that's not embedding things. That's a different scenario. Okay, the next few things here. Um, this, I want to say this removes any kind of formatting that you put into a line. Okay, now this one we've used quite a bit. Um, if you've watched any of my tutorials, this is the, the table feature. And what you can do here, you can click there, enter the table, and you can enter a, a pretty wide variety of, of table options up to a 10 by 10. Um, and of course, whenever you enter a table, let's, let's do a, a, just a 2 by 2 table. Here again, it allows you to continue to edit those kinds of things by adding a row above, a row below, delete the row, a column to the left, column to the right, or delete the column, delete the table, or maybe even insert a new table, right? So you've got those options that you see here. And if I have the table selected, you can see that at the bottom it's selected. I can go up here and I can see table properties. Uh, with 100%, what that says is I want that width to go all the way across the screen, no matter how big my screen is. That's, that's pretty common. Um, if you want that to be different, you can of course put in a specific number of pixels. Um, and I think the best way to just kind of start playing with it, right? Border width, this is the line that goes around the cells. If you want that to be there or thicker, you can of course increase that. If you want to make that go away and have just cells or things there, but no border around them, you can turn that to zero. You can, of course, make the table align uh, any way you want to, um, just like with text. 
you can also change the border style here or the color or the background within each. Well, if I'm doing this, it's for table. So it's going to do the whole thing. You also have the option if you've got the table selected. And now I have, I can go into the cell properties. I can measure, I can, I can do something to the row or the column that I'm currently in. Okay. Uh, cell properties offer a lot of the same kinds of things that the table properties did, right? Um, here you can get into the different heights, right? This particular uh, cell is 50% of the entire width, right? That's why you see 50% here. Here you can align things within the actual cell, like right? top to bottom, left to right, just within that particular cell. So that's kind of useful, especially if you're trying to align stuff. And of course, in the advanced tab, you have the same kind of things, border, style, color, and background colors. So if you wanted to insert a color for each cell, you can do it there. And then uh, for, for the you math folks, um, if you are science, if you wanted to enter some um, editor uh, to, to work with uh, mathematical formulas and things like that, uh, this is a fairly decent, if you've worked with the text or the formula editor for Microsoft Word, this feels a lot like that. It's not quite as nice as math type, um, but I think for the most part, you can get by with pretty much um, anything you see. And then the last one, pretty big one actually, uh, here, uh, depending on what apps that you have got loaded, and there's a whole other thing on that, um, you can bring in and you can embed apps within the context of your page. So let me make sure I'm on a good spot before I do this. So I'm gonna go in, let's go down below the table, and let's pull up this last part. I'm gonna click Google Apps, and this is gonna open up my Google Drive. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna select uh, something from Google Drive, and, and I'm going to, so this is a Google, this is a Google Doc, and this is going to paste the Google Doc directly into my page, okay? And, and so this is, this is the, t the, the document that I put all of, of the code on. Um, but when I'm here, I am able to literally work right within Canvas within Google Docs, okay? I think it's really helpful if you do something like this to put a, a link down uh, just in case the browser doesn't load up and the students can click on that link and it'll take you to Google, the Google application. Uh, so if it's a mobile device, it'll open up the app. If it's a, a laptop, then it'll take you right to that, that page with a full screen version uh, of what you see here. And so this plug is really, we're going to plug in all of the external apps that we have already connected to your accounts, right? So for the most part, Google Apps and, and probably Studio are going to be some of the first things that we find, right? And so that's a really great thing. And, and that's the text-rich editor, right? That's, that's everything in that thing. That's, that's your basic tools. Uh, play around with it. Get familiar with it. If you have any questions, please let us know. I'll see you next time.